In the Bohr model of the hydrogen atom, the one electron of hydrogen is in orbit around the nucleus at a certain distance r. So in the Bohr model, the electron is in orbit. In the quantum mechanics version of the hydrogen atom, we don't know exactly where the electron is, but we can say with high probability that the electron is in an orbital. And an orbital is the region of space where the electron is most likely to be found. So for hydrogen, imagine a sphere, so a three-dimensional volume, a sphere around the nucleus. And somewhere in that region of space, somewhere in that sphere, we're most likely to find the one electron of hydrogen. And so we have these two competing visions, right? So the Bohr, the Bohr model is classical mechanics, right? The electron orbits the nucleus like the planets around the sun. But quantum mechanics says we don't know exactly where that electron is. And the Bohr model turns out to be, turns out to be incorrect. And quantum mechanics has proven to be the best way to explain, uh, to explain electrons in orbitals. And we can explain, we, we can describe those electrons in orbitals using the four quantum numbers and so let's look at the first quantum number here so this is called the principal quantum number and the principal quantum number is symbolized by n so n is a positive integer so n could be equal to 1 2 3 and so on it indicates the main energy level occupied by the electron so this tells us this tells us the main energy level and you might hear this referred to as a shell sometimes so we could say what kind of shell the electron is in as n increases the average distance of the electron from the nucleus increases and therefore so does the energy so for example if this was this was our nucleus right here and let's talk about n is equal to 1 so for n is equal to 1 let's say the average distance from the nucleus is right about here let's compare that with n is equal to 2 n is equal to 2 means a higher energy level so on average the electron is further away from the nucleus and has a higher energy associated with it so that's the idea of the of the principal quantum number you're thinking about energy levels or shells and you're also thinking about average distance from the nucleus all right our second quantum number is called the angular momentum quantum number so the angular momentum quantum quantum number is symbolized by l and l indicates the shape of the orbital so this will tell us this will tell us the shape of the orbital values for l are dependent on n so the values for l go from 0 all the way up to n minus 1 so it could be 0 1 2 or however numbers however values there are up to up to n minus 1 for example let's talk about the first main energy level or the first shell so n is equal to 1 there's only one possible value you could get for the angular momentum quantum number l n minus 1 is equal to 0 is equal to 0 so that's the only possible value the only allowed value of l when l is equal to 0 we call this an s orbital so this is referring to an s orbital and the shape of an s orbital is a sphere so we've already talked about that with with the hydrogen atom so just imagine this as being a sphere right so a three-dimensional volume here so the angular momentum quantum number l since l is equal to zero that corresponds to an s orbital so we know that we're talking about an s orbital here which is shaped like a sphere so the electron is is uh is most likely to be found somewhere in that sphere let's do the the next shell so n is equal to two so if n is equal to two what are the allowed values for l so L goes 0, 1, and so on, all the way up to n minus 1. So L is equal to 0, and then n minus 1 would be equal to 1. So we have two possible values for L. L could be equal to 0, and L could be equal to 1. Notice, notice that the number of allowed values for L right, is equal to n. So for example, if n is equal to 1, we have one allowed value. If n is equal to 2, we have two allowed values. All right, we've already talked about uh, what L is equal to zero, what that means, right? So L is equal to zero means an S orbital shaped like a sphere. 
But now in the second main energy level, right, or the second shell, we have another value for L. So L is equal to one. And when L is equal to one, we're talking about a P orbital. So L is equal to one means a P orbital. And the shape of a P orbital is a little bit strange. So I'll, I'll attempt to sketch it in here. So you might hear several different terms for this. So imagine this is a volume, right? So this is a three dimensional region in here. So you could call these uh, dumbbell shaped or bow tie, whatever makes the most sense to you. But this is, this, is the, uh, this is the orbital. This is the region of space where the electron is most likely to be found if it's found in a p orbital here. Sometimes you'll, you'll, call the, you'll hear these called subshells, right? So uh, if n is equal to two, if we call this, if we call this a shell, right? If we call this a shell, then we would call these subshells. All right, so these are subshells here. And again, we're talking about orbitals. L is equal to zero is an S orbital. L is equal to one is a P orbital. Let's look at the next quantum number. So let's get some more space down here. So this is the magnetic quantum number symbolized by M sub L here. So M sub L indicates the orientation of an orbital around the nucleus. So this tells us this tells us the orientation of that orbital. And the values for ML depend on L. So ML, so ML is equal to any integral value that goes from negative L to positive L. All right, so that that sounds a little bit confusing. Let's go ahead and do uh, let's go ahead and do the example of L is equal to zero, right? So L is equal to zero up here. So let's go ahead and write that down here. If L is equal to zero, what are the allowed values for ML? There's only one, right? There's only one. The only possible value we could have here is zero. So when L is equal to zero, when L is equal to zero, let me use a different color here. So if L is equal to zero, we know we're talking about an S orbital, right? When L is equal to zero, we're talking about an S orbital, which is shaped like a sphere. And if you think about that, we have only one allowed value for the magnetic quantum number. That tells us the orientation. So there's only one orientation for that orbital around the nucleus. And that makes sense because a sphere has only one possible orientation. So if you, if you think about this as being as being um, an x, y, z axis, <clears throat> excuse me. And if this is a sphere, there's only one way to orient that sphere in space. And so, and so that's the idea of the magnetic quantum number. All right, let's do, um, let's do the same thing for L is equal to one. All right, so let's look at that now. So if we're, if we're considering L is equal to one, let me use a different color here. So L is equal to one. Let's write that down here. If L is equal to one, what are the allowed values for the magnetic quantum number? So ML is equal to, this goes from negative L to positive L. So any integral value from negative L to positive L. Well, negative L would be negative one. So let's go ahead and write this in here so we can have negative one. Uh, zero and positive one. So we have three possible values, right? So when L is equal to one, we have three possible values for the magnetic quantum number. So, so one, two, and three. The magnetic quantum number tells us the orientations, right? So the, uh, the possible orientations of the orbital or orbitals around the nucleus here. So we have three values for the magnetic quantum number. That means we get three different orientations. And we already said that when L is equal to one, we're talking about a P orbital. And a P orbital is shaped like a dumbbell here. So we have three possible orientations for, the, for, uh, for a dumbbell shape, right? So if we went ahead and put some, uh, mark these axes here, let's just say this is X axis, Y axis, and and the z axis here so we could put a dumbbell we could put a dumbbell on the x axis like that so again imagine this as being a volume this would be a p orbit we would call this a px orbital right it's a p orbital and it's on the x axis here so we have two more orientations right so we could put again if this is x this is y and this is z we could put a dumbbell right we could put a dumbbell here on the y axis so there's our second possible orientation. And then finally, if this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, of course we could put a dumbbell on the Z axis, like that. 
So this would be a pz orbital. So we could write we could write a pz orbital here, and then this one right here would be a py orbital. So we have three we have three orbitals. We have three p orbitals here. All right. So one for each axis. All right. Let's uh, let's go to the last quantum number. So the last quantum number is the spin quantum number. So the spin quantum number is m sub s here. And so when it says spin, I'm going to put this in, in quotations. Like this, this seems to imply that uh, an electron is spinning on an axis. So uh, that's not really what's happening. But let me just go ahead and draw that in here. So I could have an electron. Let me draw two different, two different versions here. So I could, have, I could have an electron spin, like a top, if you will, this way. Or I could have an electron spin around that axis going this way. And again, this is not actually what's happening in reality. The electrons don't really spin on an axis like a top. But it does help me to think about the fact that we have two possible values for the spin quantum number. So you could spin one way. So we could say, we could say uh, the spin quantum number is equal to uh, positive 1 half. So usually you, you hear that called spin up. So spin up. And we'll symbolize this with an arrow going up in later videos here. And then, and then the other possible value for the spin quantum number, so the spin quantum number is equal to negative 1 half. So you usually hear that referred to as spin down, and you could put an arrow going down. So again, electrons, electrons aren't, really, aren't really spinning in a physical sense like this. Uh, but again, two, if you think about two possible ways for an electron to spin, then you get these, these two different, uh, these two possible spin quantum, quantum numbers, so positive 1 half or negative 1 half. So those are the four quantum numbers. And we're going to use those to, uh, again, think about electrons in orbitals.